Welcome to part two of our conversation about a better understanding with James Copert. When you go to like play at another friend's house, did you ever feel like any of these things were, were still there? They would follow you specifically to your friend's house and then leave with you almost like an attachment of some sort? I, d I do remember where the, there was, I remember breaking down in tears and I was a lot older then, so I was maybe 16 and I was going to work and um, I just I just felt that this, this something was following me and I just turned around, I'd, I'd had enough. I'd, I was really like at my wits end and just turned around so just shouting, stop following me, go home. Mm -hmm. I couldn't see anything, but I felt really strongly there. But things things occurred around me and and, and I'll keep going back. There, there is some kind of, there's a, there's a couple of psychiatrists in the, in the States um, that have done a lot of research around ADHD people mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of seen some real strong links between ADHD people and things such as telekinesis, um, RSPK abilities, um, psychic abilities, mediumship and all this. There's a lot more than there is kind of neurotypical kids. Yeah. Um, and and I don't know whether it's some um, what one one of my friends who's a, a quite a well-known medium. She said that uh, because of my ADHD, if to a spirit, I'm kind of lit up almost like a torch, mm -hmm. and maybe that's why you attract something. And I suppose these things are energy. They they need energy, don't they? And and if someone's got ADHD, I suppose that's a battery to them. Um, so I did. I actually got banned from some people's houses because stuff would happen. My friend Debbie, whenever I went round to a house, the TV would start turning on and off. The, the doors would kind of start opening and closing, even, even to the point where I rang her up on the phone, things would happen and she'd hang up on me. So it, she, she just got sick of me going around and scaring the, the life out of her. Now, whether that's the um, RSPK of me projecting that with my own mind or, or it was a poltergeist, I don't know. Uh, and I remember another occasion I was at my friend Tom's house and I said, oh, someone else is with us. Um, I don't know why I said it. I just said it and his cupboard doors just flew open. So this was kind of a theme wherever, uh, everywhere I went, things did kind of happen around me and still still do, not to that extent during my kind of pubescent years, but I'm 40 now and things do start happening um, st still frequently, you know, mm -hmm. almost an, on a daily occurrence. Um, but yeah, I did, I did sometimes, it wasn't all the time, but I definitely felt like some of these things did follow me, um, follow me around, definitely. When you actually left the house when when childhood is over and it's not just you know you're going over to say at a friend's house but you're moving out you're doing your own thing now was it a relief how did it feel when you actually left that house it did it did even though i moved somewhere else negative i ended up homeless but um it was it was just i said i do want to go back to that house uh, i do a paranormal research group now and i do mm -hmm. want to go back to get some answers um, but to leave that house, I was relieved. And, and really, that one thing that's one of the most terrifying experiences I've ever had was, I, I, as I say, I've seen stuff all my life, so I don't really get scared, but this did scare me. And I don't, I don't use the term demon. I think it's wrapped up in, in religion and things, and I don't quite know what things are. But I was outside one day, and this, this thing was, I, I was just, it was dark, and I heard someone sprinting up to me and I quickly turned around thinking oh is, who is this and this figure it was jet black and it just ran straight past me as close as it possibly could without actually touching me and around the corner mm -hmm. and it just dripped it dripped with this just hate just sadness and hate and I think that was what what was there and again that was just a, a, a intimidation it, it, it was as close as possible without actually touching me Complete, and I don't. People talk about shadow, shadow people, and my experiences of shadow people are. I think there's lots of different kinds. I don't think they're one thing. I think some are just just spirits that, you know, have a different colour. I don't see them all as negative, and I don't think this was a shadow person. This was something different. It was just something very nasty and dark mm -hmm. and ancient. It definitely felt felt like that. Why do you think it had such a negative intent with your family? I mean, is it? Could it have been any family? It could have been anybody that, that lived there and it just happened to be that you guys were the victims because you were in the wrong place at the wrong time? Or, I think so. You know, I think it was, if you look, at if, if the previous owner committed suicide and the previous owner before that committed suicide yeah. and, str and strange illnesses as well. So the, the, the previous owner's family as well, the, but the, um, his son ended up getting a condition where he was in chronic pain constantly, ended up not being able to walk. 
and uh, he ended up dying really young as well. Um, just lots of kind of negative things kind of went on from there. So I, th I do think it was related to to that house. Luckily now it's no one lives there. It's a holiday home, so people are in there for a, a short space of time, which I'm I'm really pleased about because I I do think it is there that it's something really dark residing there. So now I, I think. Now, Sorry, now, now, even more people can have their lives ruined on vacation. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah, <laughs> I think it's, 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 you know, with them being short term, I don't think it will affect them. And, yeah. and th there was other times as well. And I, I don't think there was lots of different spirits in the home. I, I think this was this same entity mm -hmm. changing shape. So not long after we first moved in and they, they talk about when someone's um completely scared to the you know, um i've forgotten the words but he he was so scared that an old man appeared in his room and he wasn't asleep he was it was kind of early evening he's awake and he was paralyzed with fear my brother he he was absolutely petrified that was the word petrified like he couldn't speak for maybe three hours um one of my friends came around who saw a little girl crouch down in the corner crouch down kind of close to the floor with the feet not on the knees but with the feet on the floor just staring up at him again in quite a intimidating way um and, and you know my there was a, there was some there was like some residual ghost there was in that village alone is the gray lady and we, we saw her walking across the yard and it was that traditional kind of residual spirit of, of a cloud of smoke forming into a, a kind of a, a body strolling across the the yard and then vanishing like smoke and my friend who's with me was one of the people that always used to take take the mickey out of us for believing in in ghosts and he he never did after that he never even when he used to pick me up he used to go to the other end of the street and wait there after seeing that um so there was kind of you know just i think with the history of the place but i think those other sightings was this this one entity changing its shape and, and becoming something different mm -hmm. just purposely to scare people what do you think it is that's in that house and why do you think it's there? I mean, I know that this is all conjecture. It's just your opinion. But as being someone who is obviously very close to that house, more than any of us, when you look back on this, do, do you have any, do, is there anything that you make sense of as to why it's there? Was there any info, you know, any research that you've done that, that points to anything? Where are you at with that? It's there's a lot of myths and legends with, with that village. So that there was, Within the village, there's the village is kind of in a circle around what was another village, which is completely submerged and kind of been been left. Um, it's just just a field now, but you could still see the shapes of where buildings were. Mm -hmm. And there, there was a there was a legend when we first moved there that there was this stake in the middle of the this this field, and if you broke the the field, then um, demonic entities had come out and and kill you and stuff like this. So these were the, the kind of things that the kids used to speak about. They also spoke about, there used to be a wooden castle on this hill um, by the school. And um, there was a, a legend that someone climbed up their window. Um, she'd been to a ball and wasn't allowed out, the, 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 the lady that lived there. And her husband saw her and thought it was someone breaking in and had, had killed her. And um, she, she, then, she then died and pulled the mask off and saw it as his wife. And, and it was those kind of legends constantly going around. It's just a really ancient place. What what specifically in that place was, I, I don't know. All I can do is kind of hypothesize. I, I felt like it hated the fact of our our life, that we were alive and, mm -hmm. and hated our humanity. That's what I felt like. Look at, looking kind of back on it, it, mm -hmm. it did feel like that was its reason. And that's why it was causing the negativity was its, its de detesting of us as humans now whether this is a, an, an ancient entity from you know pre-times or I, I don't know where it's come from or or whether it's a manifestation of just maybe negativity in the house of, of previous families and and maybe the suicides were just a coincidence and that's created something negative i don't know i really don't know i just know that it's it just doesn't it didn't like us it didn't like the fact that we were human and and that was kind of the feeling i got off it have you ever returned to the house i took my son on new year's eve we, we were we were talking about it and i just said to him would you we were passing it the, the village and i said would you like to see it and he said yeah and we drove down and i was parked outside telling him kind of some of the stories and 
I, I started setting off and both of us at exactly the same time went, what was that? And, and literally this woman in a green dress had appeared right in front of the car as I set off and kind of went through the bonnet and just vanished. Both, both of us saw, because I even said to Charlie, my son, what, what did you see? And so I asked him to describe it to me first to see if we saw the same thing, which we had. And again, that was very much a, I'm going to freak you out. I'm going to do something to scare you. Another, another time I went, um, it was when I was trying to get, get in the house to do, do an investigation and speak to the, the current owners. Um, and I just looked in the window and I just said, yeah, it, it is me. I am back and heard a massive crash from within the house. I couldn't see anything move, but there was just a big crash in the house. Um, so it, it doesn't it doesn't like me, whatever it is. Have you had any luck getting in touch about renting the place as a vacation home to to go and uh, investigate or just go back through those doors? We, we have kind of thought about that, but we, we want it to be kind of respectful of the owners. And, and I've kind of written them a couple of letters mm-hmm. and left my number and, and they've not got back to me. Yeah. Um, maybe they don't want that kind of negative reputation on, sure. on the place. I, I don't know. I did kind of say that there, there would be a lot of market out there for people that would like to visit a haunted place. But so far, they've, they've not done it. That, that could be a potential sure. to, for the future. Do you have any reservations? Like, let's say that you do get an acceptance and maybe it's just a personal one maybe saying yes you can come here and investigate but you're not going to you can't publish whatever you find or 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 not name the address or name the house um you know which is obviously fairly common um do you uh, how how do you process that do you have any reservations or or are you excited about the idea what goes through your mind because I'm sure you've thought of that. If you get that letter or you get that response and they say, yeah, here's the green light, go ahead. In your mind right now, if if you got that letter in the mail today, what would your reaction be? I'll be honest, I'd be scared. I, I would be scared to go back in that house. It, it, it is something something dark. And whether people believe that or not, it genuinely is. They, everyone, people, visitors, everything saw things happen and move hover in midair, be thrown across the room. You know, th- this was a normal occurrence in that house. And I would be scared, and I would be scared that it, it could latch on to me again. But part of me wants answers, and part of me also, you know, it, my, my work and everything is about helping people. And I, I I do get scared that someone else could eventually live in that house yeah. and and have these negative things happen to them and potentially someone else take their own life, which is yeah. horrific. Absolutely uh, horrific. The the fact that you, you know, you, you've now, you're not, you're obviously not living there anymore. Um, uh, but you know, obviously there's, there's a lot of questions there. It, it's not an easy thing to answer from afar. Uh, I, I, there's no judgment that I think anyone can give you for whatever answer you give on that because they're not you. They haven't lived through that. Um, you know, good or bad, we are going to have, some forms of emotional attachments to places that we have spent portions of our lives in. Um, And so there's, there's naturally going to be that curiosity there of, you know, what is the place like now? Is that thing still there? But now you obviously, you know, you have a family, you have, uh, you have kids. Um, uh, Would, uh, uh, has that run through your mind at all? Because obviously this thing has, uh, already attacked your your family, uh, you know your your mom, your dad, your your brothers, and 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 there has been such grief that's been brought on, um, you know that that portion of your family unit, your your birth family unit, if you will. Um, yeah. Are are you concerned? Um, are there reservations there that this thing could then now look at you as an adult, and now you're the dad, um, and it it kind of infiltrate or infest. Uh, your family unit as it is as an adult, as a parent? I don't think it could. I think it's very much attached to that house. And, okay. and we're too far removed now. But if I, if, I was, if I was homeless with my family and that house was the only option, I, I, I wouldn't take my family in there. No. That's for sure. And, you know, things, things do still occur around me. And I think I'd, I'd be aware and, and be, be more now, uh, kind of have the tools to, to kind of fight that and, and bring the people in to fight that as well. Do you feel that you are, I mean, the term that we hear quite often, um, you know, empathic is, is one of them. Of course, you know, psychic is the, is the old school way of saying some of those things, but, um, 
do you feel that you yourself are uh, is somewhere in one of those zones of, of being empathic, being able to sense uh, the other side uh, more so than, than the average person? I think so, and I, I don't know why. I'm no one special or anything, but it's just always occurred. It's always just been a normal sure. part of me. Not not just even with that. Even, you know, if I'm if I was on a train and you know there were three people on the train and someone with kind of quite serious mental health issues walked in that carriage, they'll sit next to me. I don't know what it is about me. Sure, that's just that's I, I'm the person that the, the the crazy guy had come and speak to on the street. If there's a thousand <laughs> people, it's just always been like that. Um, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know. I haven't got any answers to that. I, like I said, I don't know if it's this link with ADHD or, mm-hmm. um, or, or even just the fact, you know, I, I kind of pride myself being in, in quite a nice person and I always help people and that's, that's what I've always done. And whether, you know, that's part of it as well, whether people, I think the on the other side are more inclined to you know, I think it, you'll probably be able to know better than me that the, the people in this kind of area field most of the time the, the genuine people who do have the general abilities tend to be nicer people i find you know sure. kind of real genuine genuine people um and i don't know whether that's part of of the attraction to those people i don't know i mean I, there, there's something there you know the fact that we all have this uh extreme interest in something you know i think lends itself then uh, anytime anyone has a a extreme interest in something i think we have to look and go what else is going on with that individual? What other kind of interests yeah. do they have? And, and, and quite often it, it is something. I mean, me and, and my wife, um, Asperger's, you know, um, I know it's, yeah. it's called, you know, some, they, I don't think that's technically the term anymore, but we joke about it because we like the name. We, if somebody yeah. else wants to change it and make it negative. I like it. We, we've we've jokingly named our farm that we live on Aspie Acres uh, because <laughs> <laughs> it, it's two non-neurotypical people with their non-neurotypical daughter deciding out of nowhere that we're going to be farmers and do ghost podcasts. The ghost podcast has been going on forever, but now we decided we're going to add farming to the mix, which Fantastic. neither of us have ever done. But we <laughs> feel so at peace with this and the idea, and we just love it. Um, you know, I, I think it's something not necessarily, I'm not seeing auras around people and going, oh, they're a good one to talk to. But you can tell, you know, after talking to someone after a minute or two, and not in a negative way by any means, that, you know, that you're talking to someone who's non-neurotypical. It's just, I think we all who are kind of on that spectrum communicate in a certain way yeah, that, that we that definitely. we just we just know it. And it's not like, oh, there's an oddity there or an oddity there. There's just, there's a connection that, that we, I think we almost subconsciously make with each other and just kind of lets each other know uh, we're safe to talk to, to each other, because I think a lot of us are very defensive and, and our guard is up of talking to almost anyone. Um, and every once in a while, the green light goes off going, this one's safe. <laughs> this yeah, one, this yeah. one understands me. And we kind of speak the same language, you know, in, in layman's terms of what you would describe it as. Um, so I, I, I think that there is a connection there between folks who are somewhere on uh, on the spectrum and having the ability to sense things but also just um even if uh, i always kind of describe it as like a one to ten in terms of abilities to sense things one is like i i can feel if there's something maybe in the room but i couldn't tell you who it is what it is or anything about it but i feel there's something kind of off here ten is i can see the damn thing in the room and, and we're both in there i can only feel it but you can say who it is and what they look like or or someone who's at a 10 could do that. Um, and and I, there, there's there's something, I think, to that in terms of, of, of our abilities. And I think it has something to do with, with sensitivity uh, or a sense that is not necessarily recognized as one of our normal senses. Um, just as some people have a super hearing or super eyesight, uh, I think there's something there where some of us are just born with better senses to whatever this is we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah super and, and i think it's something you know potentially as well about the the neuro, neurodiverse brain yeah. where if you look at most children most children kind of do have this ability and and they kind of when when the brain's going from the childhood into the kind of adolescent stage they lose it and whether kind of more neurodiverse yeah. people don't don't lose that part of the the development i don't know maybe that's that's one kind of hypothesis that I've I've had with it all. Yeah, it just keeps running throughout life and really doesn't change. It, it, it's interesting because I uh, it, when you look at that too, um, 
in terms of non-paranormal, I, I think that that still runs uh, in neurodiverse individuals too. My example being myself. I have uh, I've had some very specific interests throughout my entire life <laughs> from from very young childhood. Yeah. I literally have cassette tapes of me playing. I called it Ghostbuster Radio uh, at the time. I was two. I was pretending I was doing a ghost show in 1984 into a cassette tape um, and, you know, basically doing a version of this show 30 some years ago. Um, And I was two. Now, now here we are all these years later and it's my career. It is what I do. But obviously it was a passion back then. Um, and and, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, but there's other things too, where when you have those passions and drives, you just kind of go nuts with it. Um, food was another interest of mine. I played, uh, when I was a kid, I would pretend I was doing a cooking show on camera. Um, so what did I end up doing in my early twenties before I launched the ghost show? I got into food blogging and ended up with a show on travel channel. It's, it's one of those things where you just, you know, Folks who are are neurodiverse, I think very early on we recognize what our passions are are, <laughs> and and we don't and really yeah we don't really we take them to extremes and they don't really change. It's yeah. like by the age of five we can tell you everything we want to do and then we're going to go do it. <laughs> and, yeah, and and I think with a lot of us we have those sort of passions or or even if we're not something we're going to go do, it's just an interest. Like Titanic was one of them for me. Turned out to be with my wife too. Um, which was really kind of funny because we discovered that on our second date and she thought I was making fun of her because she's like, how did you know that about me? I'm like, what do you mean? Like, here's my autographed Robert Ballard book, uh, you know, that I got when I was like eight. You know, <laughs> and, and then one of our early dates, we went and saw Dr. Ballard do his speech because he happened to be in our city and we were both just the thrilled dorks in the back. Um, but it, it it's interesting just how those interests and those passions um, run with uh, with folks who are neurodiverse, a- and then if they have those abilities, those added abilities on top, how that will just continue on throughout life, as will those passions that are are developed at such an early age. Um, it's just trying to then adapt those sort of things into adulthood <laughs> and to yeah. make them make them work in the grown up world, um, which is interesting because we're at a point in time now where we can we can do things that otherwise didn't exist. Uh, as a career path when we were four or five. So I, I find it very fascinating. Um, you're, you're connecting uh, the two together. Cause I too believe there's a, there's a very vast connection there that I don't think has been e- explored uh, anywhere near as deep as, as it will be uh, or, or should be. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, my, my, my child, um, Charlie, he's, he's ADD and uh, autism and, and he's got, you know, in his sleep, things fly about his room. And I think it's him rather than anything else. Yeah. Um, and, and then just as a, a real strange coincidence, I, I got with my, my, my partner and, and then her daughter's been, um, Lily's been diagnosed with autism as well. So we've got this kind of strange attraction mm-hmm. <laughs> that kind of just kind of links things together as well. That wraps up our conversation with James Copert about a better understanding. A big thank you to him for joining us on the program today and sharing his life experiences with us. Until next time, for the Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.